really no excuse because you know if you put the time and the thought into it the technology is there now that we can we can actually achieve things pretty fast and look really good so i'm chris and i'm a designer founder of harbour brands and this is my ugly mug <laughs> um we create brands and websites for small businesses and solopreneurs so mobile responsive desktops and tablets uh, focus a lot on the visual side of it and content I've been doing this for a long time, over 25 years, um, designing and developing websites. So I've seen different things come and go. Um, I've had to keep up with trends and technology changes and everything. Um, and this is how websites used to look whenever I first started out, which is still intimidating to me, which is proper coding and you know hard coding. Uh, and it was basically learning another language. Um, you know, to, to be able to understand what all this does and what how, how it operates. But luckily, nowadays, technology has moved on. And this is how they look. So it's a bit more of a drag and drop um, option, which is a lot user friendly to people that are not in the techie scene. So I think I was joking with Una earlier, if you can log into a Zoom call, you can actually create a website because there's a lot more technology in the likes of Zoom. Uh, so yeah, so they're just so powerful. Um, and there's also different ways of creating different types of websites. So I've tried them all. I've tried the easy ways and the hard ways, and um, I've really simplified my sort of process um, to understand exactly what freelancers need and what they require. So yep, we only need to know one way, and that's to create one type of website. And most of the freelancer websites, they're all quite similar. You know, you've got your About Us page, you've got services, maybe a news or a blog section, and then portfolio to show off the work. Um, and then you've got your contact and gallery. So we're not we're not really um, trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, or win awards with these websites. We're just trying to get something up there that, you know, gains trust through a respectable website that works well and looks good. Um, yeah, so one word, page builder, or, or maybe that's too, I'm not sure. Um, but Squarespace is quite good because this is this sort of drag and drop. That's a whizzy wig thing where it's like, um, what you see is what you get. So you're not worrying about, you know, how does it look on mobile? How does it look on tablets? It's all kind of, Squarespace has designed this, take out all the heavy lifting and all design development for you. It's also got some really nice templates. So yeah, a website, it's, it's just a container really for your information and your website's only as good as the info that you put in. And that's my sad attempt at drawing a boat there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's for important information to get across. So it's like understanding your audience, who, who the websites aim towards, understanding their pain points and what sort of information they need. And this is vitally important to get and a, a good functioning website up as much as you know look good and works well. So today we're going to jump into Squarespace. Um, there is other platforms like um, Webflow and WordPress and all, which are fantastic. And you know, there's different. You know, you, you use different platforms for different solutions. But for freelancer websites, I find Squarespace takes out a lot of the headaches for you. So we're going to build them on this brand new website <laughs> within an hour. Um, sorry. Yeah. The most important thing when you're starting a website is to start with a plan. So understand, you know, what you needed to do, the purpose behind it, and what information and content be going into it. Um, you can use different platforms, the likes of Figma or Sketch or Adobe XD to lay out we call it wireframing. So that's kind of just boxes to understand where information's going and the click throughs and um, just just sort of information hierarchy. And you can do this with a pen and, pen and paper just as easy. Um, but as long as you have a certain idea of where you want to go and what you want to achieve, it makes the process a whole lot easier. So I'm just gonna jump into Squarespace here. Um, 
So I'll go ahead and get started. You can see make templates your your own without any without with these. Um, we've got different topics. You've got fashion ones, business ones, food, entertainment, and we've done a really good job of designing these up. You know they look really professional and smart. Um, back whenever I was starting to use page builders, the standard wasn't great. Um, certainly didn't have this amount of options. So you can see there's quite a lot of. Um, we can go to all templates. There's hundreds, and I'm sure you know you'll be able to find one that suits your your need or your style. And um, you can also filter them here by portfolio or membership, or if you're more of a blog, you know if you're writing articles. Um, so let me just sign into Amanda's account here. There's nothing created yet, so we'll basically create a website. Because I've spoken to Amanda yesterday, I know she likes oranges and pinks. So that kind of helps. <laughs> uh, we're going to start with this one here. Basically, this is setting up your test site. Welcome to your site. So we'll just give this a name here. We'll call it Amanda. And continue. There's a lot of prompts here as well. Um, if you get stuck, you know, it, it actually explains um, how you edit pages. And you run through this um, explainer, your navigations, styling your site, and then just get started. So basically, that's one website up and running. And I find it easier to start with a template that's quite close to what you like and your style and then adapt it accordingly. Um, there's also an assistant here that you can run through and I'll teach you everything that I'm gonna show you today. So if I don't get, do a good job, you can always go back to this. <laughs> uh, so we'll close this. And so basically this is the main home bar at the top here. And you can flick between the views. So if you hover over, you can see this is a desktop view and mobile view. And you can see how it's all made responsive for you already, which is amazing. Um, we'll click back to this. And then this here arrow actually gives you a full screen view. So that's how the website will look whenever it's published. And then the main thing here is the edit. So if you want to edit a page, Click into this, and this will give you the option to change your heading. So if we're wanting like Amanda, it's as simple as that. Just click save. But I know Amanda's not a chef, so we'll start putting proper text in here. Or maybe she is, I'm not sure. So, um, yep, you've also got the site header. Oh, I'll go to the site, sorry. So, Amanda, I'll take this out. And these buttons here. So everything you just double click on. So it's all very intuitive. Um, um, I'll say, um, get in touch. And even the images, double click, and you can go replace, upload file. Select the image here. And then there's different options for like, if you want it to fit to the page or fill the full page and also corner radius. So, you know, just around off the corners. Um, about five or six years ago, we didn't have this function. It would have took me about 10 lines of code just to curve those corners. So yeah, everybody's catching up on what I can do now, which is great. And the websites are of a better standard. Um, so yeah, also up here now we've got styles. So this is where we can change our colors. 
or fonts, you know, any animation styles and spacing. Um, just takes a wee while to play about and understand where things are, but you really get the hang of it within a day. Um, if I want to change the typeface, you can switch this. Um, say the headings. Brace all the fonts. And you can see there's no shortage of different styles. And they load just with a click of a button. So the one that we liked was Brie. And you can see how it's changed already. Um, so that's your headings, your body copy. Uh, let's see. That's headings. Go back. Paragraphs is your body copy. So if you would like to change text further down, you can browse off once again. And Brandon was quite nice. So that's the type styles changed. Um, then we can go into the buttons themselves and say we want Brandon for this. It's a bit small, but we can change the size of the button. There's just a slider. You can see that's getting bigger. And then also, I quite like the rounded corners on the buttons. So just again with a click, it's just finding where everything is. Um, just you can really customize your style and you know how you how you want it to work. Also, animation is quite cool. Um, just clicking, you can see how pages can slide up or they can scale or fade in. Personally, I like to keep them quite subtle, so the likes of a slide is quite nice, um, just as long as it's not overkill. Uh, and also spacing then and animations. So we'll go back to this here. Um, what's great is um, they've got this option for grid systems now, where it's just drag, and you can actually position them anywhere you want. So you can really visually design this um, without having to know any code. Also add extra spacing. And again, if you wanted to put a link in here, you've got this here option, this WYSIWYG. And we'll click on here and we'll type in HTTPS ndlist.com, ndlist.ie, sorry. And you can see how it's put in this live link so yeah and then earlier this morning we designed a brand new logo up for amanda i don't think she's seen it yet so hopefully she likes it uh, just double click on the logo add logo and upload file so that's it there so we butterfly which is a social butterfly <laughs> and then again, we can resize it and scale it. So you can see how quickly this is all coming together. And it doesn't look like the template we that's just been off the shelf. Um, and basically that's it. It's just running through, you know, my background, my background may be a bit small, so we can change that to a header too. And then, and then we can put in live. Oh, sorry. You can also Apple say it if you make a mistake, which is which I use quite a lot. Um, and then paragraph one, make it slightly bigger. And also if you select these and just hit either the trash can, the delete, or just the delete button itself, you can get rid of things that you don't actually need. And then so edit section. This is actually a black background image. So we can go in here and we can replace it. Or another one. Man, the most like the 80s. There's a lot of 80 photos here. <laughs> and again, if you click anywhere on the, the on the on the picture, you can actually position it left, the right, or cent center. So probably that looks the best. 
you've also got loads of different image effects, you know, like um, different like sepia tones and different color tones. Overlay colors. <clears throat> Just do a few more of these images here and finish up the home page. That's a bit quicker. Again, we're going to bring in size if you want it bigger or smaller, or change the color of it. Um, another thing I was going to do there was go back to our colors. And the, this is the color palette that, the, that uh, the template selected for us. But if we want to tweak them, there's all different presets, which are all sort of the harmonies and hues that Squarespace have selected for you or else you can actually choose your own. Make up more of an orange. So you can see how that's changing in real time. This is amazing. This upload. That's a wee bit low for me, so it's just a case of sliding it up. And again, because this button isn't the same as this button, what we can do is go back into buttons, and there's a button at the bottom here, lots of buttons, um, apply to all button types. And this will transform or like a super case. Um, that'll change all the buttons to the same sort of so I'll have to apply that again. There you go. So you can see that that's keeping it uniform and global throughout the site. Um, also what's pretty good is the blocks that we can add. So at the bottom if we wanted to add a new block and say it's like a Say a newsletter sign up. Click here, and it'll automatically position. Sign up on a, a marketing tool that's is built in the Squarespace, which I'll show you later on. And um, oh, again, me size up, center, and then always see if you work. And that's that up to date. And at any time, you can always check the mobile view to see how things are looking and, you know, if you need a tweak on the mobile version as well. So that's basically, I'll change this last image here. Chris, can I jump in here with a question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so question, so it's kind of, I was going to ask you about sort of uploading, um, samples of work, uh, particularly if you're a creative, um, but Catherine has a really interesting question, which is, uh, uh Chris noticed that your design work lately is it's less text, more pics tricky when you're a copywriter trying to showcase your writing skills, any tips? Yes, I would say um, because people don't read websites like a book, you know, they're, we're scrolling nation now. It's just quick information. I would actually put the full articles or your pieces of work in maybe a blog section. So if anybody really wants to get in and read them, um, it's a bit like my portfolio work, you know, where I've got images. So there's nothing wrong with having lots of information further in the site. Um, with you know links buttons to read more 
Um, it's just if it's very text heavy, it, sometimes it does put the viewer off unless it's like infographics. Um, de depending on your audience too, you know, there might be people that do want to read lots of stuff on the homepage. Um, but I think because I'm designing this because I've got a, a visual eye on, on things and I'm terrible with words. <laughs> so maybe that's why I keep it as short as possible. Um, there's a but there's a formats within Squarespace for blogs also. Yep. Is that correct. Yeah. And then there's also if you wanted to kind of upload samples of your work in a portfolio page, could you could you show us how we could do that? Absolutely. Yep. So um, that's the home page built. Um, then down this left hand side, there's pages design, lots of other options. But what I like to do is delete all these pages, first of all. So just get rid of them, start fresh again. We'll do the blog page next, um, which is quite easy to do. And you can see them, they're being removed from the navigation up here. So we'll delete the pages. So main navigation, if I click on this to add one, we'll see there's a blog section, which is collections. and all different layouts and styles from here. So we might like this one. And again, you can call this whatever page you want, but you can see how it's blog title one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And down the side, you can see all the different um, articles. So this is where you would be putting your stories in. Um, and you can edit the settings. So this is the URL. So whatever you want to call your post, this is what people would type in to follow it. Um, the author, and if it's linking to anything. It's also great options for like SEO. You know, if you're gonna, um, if, you, if you want the search engines to pick up on this, um, you can put in titles and descriptions here on social image sharing. So this is your blog post title one. So whatever we change this to, so this could be like article one. You and Chris, could some. you, Chris, could you just use Square pay, Squarespace just for a blog? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that it would just be one page, and then what you can do is select that blog to be your home page. Yeah. So we can, we can change this to paragraph two. And a lot of people do do that, you know, um, depending on what the website needs to do or the, the purpose behind it. Yeah. And if I think that's that, one of the things that we kind of said, uh, well, yeah. we meant to sort of say at the beginning of this session is that, you know, it's worthwhile really giving some consideration about what purpose you want your website to uh, yeah you know what, what you wanted to do for you so if you want it to be uh, a way to showcase your creative talents then obviously it needs to have a portfolio function um if you want it to if you want to have an online booking kind of function then you obviously need to consider that as well in terms of booking consultations and integrating other apps whether it's calendy or whatever yep. the case may be party bookings, yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to make this just a blog, you would click on the gear um, and then just down at the very bottom, set as homepage. That would be just one page. Then, you know, you can just go straight in your blog, depending on the purpose of what you need it for. So that's the blog section. You can also style up the blog differently. Um, let's see, manage edit, edit section. You can have side by side, or you can have it like a missionary layout. I think that was changing. Yeah. Got some nice questions coming in as well, Chris. Um, so they're not too kind of, hard. <laughs> and they're not hard at all. Like I could nearly <laughs> bring them. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Sorry, do you want to? Well, I, yeah, so um, 
Okay, so Rupert uh, has asked, once you build a test site, how do you migrate it to your URL? Okay, there's an option here where you can actually buy a domain through Squarespace. And you just, you can see how there's like a test name. It's like a dummy one, Bobcat, Blackbird, whatever. They just put up random domains every time. So what we do is just replace this with your domain name. Um, and basically Squarespace does it for you. I think it's just, you need to change a few DNS settings, but that's a real easy walkthrough way of doing this. Um, so whenever you type in your proper domain name, you don't see this and you see the, the, the full site. So again, here's a portfolio page that I've just pulled in and you've got different portfolio, one, two, three, and these could be different articles or, you know, maybe it's is a, a design project or any SEO or social stuff um, with links to project too. So I'm just giving you a very sort of high level overview of what we can yeah. do. Um, I'm trying to fit in as much as I can within the R, but um, you can really start tweaking. It's, it's, it's kind of nearly idiot proof, isn't it? It really is. Like if I can do it, <laughs> oh. I actually, yeah, it's, uh, I wish I had this five or 10 years ago. I would have saved a I would have had more hair back then. <laughs> um, um, there's also e-commerce. So there's store. You can actually start selling as well. And obviously, once you start getting up in price, um, you can see here, they give you at the very bottom, they give you a 14-day free trial, which is great. So you can go on and it won't cost you anything. You don't need to put your credit card in. And you can try it out and test it out. And then if you're comfortable, confident enough, um, you can subscribe. So yeah. it's basically... 14 pound a month um, and you get, there you go, you get a free domain with it. Um, SSL security, like I was paying hundred pound for a security SSL back in the day alone. Uh, it was a nightmare. So they're really taking out a lot of the hassle. You know, you've got um, hosting, you've got domains, you've got your SEO options. Um, you can also have multiple contributors. So if there's a few authors on your blog, yeah. you can find this um chris, and then obviously chris sorry just to jump in just on on that uh e-commerce aspect to it i mean one of the things that we mentioned at the last uh webinar a fortnight ago is that there is a grant uh available from the local enterprise office okay. in the, certainly in the republic anyway um for people to get their get a website up and running now it has to be an e-commerce or it has, it has to have e-commerce functionality but presumably something like this by adding even a kind of request a quote or, you know, if there's merchandise or whatever uh, that you might be able to sell through your website, it doesn't have to be a fully fledged shop as such, but presumably that would help people to qualify for some form of grant as well towards maybe a Squarespace subscription. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just either plug in your sort of PayPal details or a Stripe account. Um, it kind of does it for you. Um, Very good. Um, Chris, another question from Barbara. Would you recommend uh, for a business site, would you recommend to design mobile first or desktop first? This, if you're using this, it doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as you're keeping an eye on both of them. Um, I was always taught mobile first because it's easier coming from a small screen up the way. But there's a few sort of people out there thinking that, you know, Get it big, get it, get it as big as you can, you know, because we're using fluid and sort of um, different measurements now rather than it being so structured that it doesn't really matter. But I prefer making sure that it works well on mobile because mobile has got a lot of people using it. You know, yeah. there's more, much people on mobile nowadays yeah. than there is on yeah. um, desktop. So, uh and Chris, um, did you use Squarespace to design your own website? No, <laughs> I had too much functionality needed for mine. Um, okay. yeah. So I, I, mine, mine was on WordPress um, and only because I had so many different things, bells and whistles happening. Um, I think this is Squarespace is grand for a certain size of client, but whenever you start getting out of the box, you know, there is, other different options well that's it our um, own website is wordpress as well isn't it because we've yeah, got well, so need, much you, functionality you guys needed a job board and lots of yeah. different things and 
WordPress still has a place for that, you know, and yeah. other, it's not just WordPress, but, you know, it's Webflow and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be Squarespace, but this is just what I find um, starting off the easiest to use. Okay. Um, also then, this is our form, so we can easily change this and add different form fields. So you can see add a field, check boxes, surveys, you know, um, drop downs. Um, so again, it's just either click or drag and drop. Excellent. And Chris, just just in, can I ask a question in relation to imagery and so on? Again, presumably yeah. all of the imagery on that you access through Squarespace, it's all royalty free or that's all pre-cleared, yeah? Yeah. Um, let's see if I can add an image here. You can see that select price stock images. So okay. these are all legal. Yes. And um, you've got all these free. And um, it's the site that you love. Peter, it's on Splash. On Splash, yeah. Well, I was going to say, yeah. There's obviously other sources if you want to pull in other other images that are royalty free as well, yeah. Yeah, and then there's premium, so this is part by Getty. So I'm guessing you need to pay for these ones because they're yeah. more high. Sure. High quality. And then, presumably, again, you, you you know people on the indie list will have their own photography that maybe they do themselves and we've seen a couple of brilliant examples that our own freelancers have where they've generated to use their own images that they've generated themselves just to populate mm -hmm. and adds very much a lot of their own personality to a website absolutely if you can do that you know that's gonna make your site stand out as well you know i'll give your personality and your yeah so again if i just save this the top of the page, if you click on edit and then this is part Richard would like, which I don't really know too much about the SEO side, um, where we can fill in descriptions and SEO titles and you can hide from results. And this is what's going to get you up the rankings of Google, which is, you know, it's it's its own thing. You know, it's it's a it's a specialism in its own right, really. Yeah, and again, it's it's not wishing to turn off people that say, "No, I have to worry about doing the SEO or invest in PPC." I think the basic is get the site up, and then those things will follow on. And there's always people that are within our community that you know we can put people in touch with as well if they want more expert help. I presume is that that fair? Yeah. 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 Think for me. I think, like, look, um, I, I think one of the big intimidating things for a lot of people that, that certainly I hear back is that where do I start? You know, do I start writing the copy? I can write a certain amount of copy, but I'm not great at writing copy for myself. Um, but again, there are professionals that we have within the indie list that maybe through barter or whatever that we're more than happy to introduce people to. And you know, trading services between freelancers for something like this might be might be the way forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, there's also um, e-commerce, there's marketing, um, where you can actually get into email campaigns. Um, so you can actually connect with the audience and start growing your subscription list, which is quite good. So this is all contained. Whenever you use Alexa WordPress, you start integrating Alexa MailChimp and all different third-party apps where this is all built into its, its own thing. Um, and it serves a purpose for freelancers and for our size of business. Um, also scheduling, you know, if you want to book a date or, you know, book a call. That's the new thing that they've brought out. Um, analytics. Um, so again, I don't know if this is really good, but it's probably good enough for what we need it for. Again, you know, knowing where your traffic's coming from, um, location. So it's kind of like an overview of analytics. And I find with websites, I become like, a, especially my own, I'm a tinker. I always try things and test things out. And, you know, so websites don't, you don't get it up and that's it done. It kind of, it grows and changes over time. And especially, you know, if you're bringing out new work, it's keeping it, keeping fresh content. Um, Chris? John, it's a really good question here, which is, uh, what do you think of Carbon Made? Now, as far as I know, Carbon Made is a, is a portfolio site. 
a little bit like Behance to a certain yeah. extent in that you have your own page on Carbon Made. Is that correct? Carbon Made? Yeah, Carbon you're made. on my video. I think these are all fantastic. And, you know, if I had the time, I'd be on all of them. <laughs> um, and again, this is what you could link back. So you can have your your sort of website linking out to these different things, you know, there's Dribble, there's Behance, there's um, this Carbon Made. But again, if this works for you, great. Um, it looks like it's quite similar. And, it, you know, it's, it's another option for this page builder idea. So as long as you find a page builder that you're happy and comfortable with, then, uh, you know, I'm all for that as well. I think the thing, the point is, is to get your presence consolidated in one place online. Yep. And make sure that when people go looking for you, they can find you and they can trust that you are able to do what it's kind of like that thing. Physician, heal thyself, you know, show us that you can do what you're promising you're going to do yeah, for yeah. on our yeah. brand. We were saying it's almost like a digital business card something that you know it's creditable you look at it you're trustworthy you know you've got testimonials up you you can you can do the work you can you know it's it's all those sort of it's just building trust again and you know yeah and i think so, it's kind of like you know once you once you have it out there um to kind of constantly be going back and refining it and including new content in it whether it's as you say um a testimonial from a client um uh, a, a a new blog entry a new piece of content that you want to upload into your portfolio um like it's not like you build it and then you abandon it you build no. it and then you go back and kind of keep it fresh and 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 keep new content going in there Mm -hmm. And the likes of Google likes fresh content too. Do you know if you're up the yeah. blogs and um, you've probably seen that with your own site as well. Do you know it's yeah. something that keeps evolving. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the worst because I, I trying to do my own website. I can do it for other people and do it in a couple of days, but my own um, takes <laughs> takes a long time. Where I fall in that trap of overthinking or trying to do, you know, even at this stage of my career, I still hit some of the pain some points. Of the, the, yeah, so, well, that kind of leads us nicely into the kind of the mistakes that people make when they're doing yeah, so, it or when they're embarking on it. Is there any other questions on this um, page builder? It's kind of one of these ones where you need to just play about with it and click things and don't worry about breaking it because you can't. Um, and just learning and pushing pushing the boundaries of it and seeing what can be done. Um, guys, just really nice shout out here from Claudine. If anyone needs help nailing down the look of their branding and or their website, give her a shout. Her contacts are in there in the text or in the chat box. Thanks a million, Claudine. That's really kind of you. Um, uh, Barbara has a question, how to connect to your email? Does it give you a bespoke email address? Squarespace space. Sorry, what was the question again? This, the question is, how do you connect this to your email? Email? Um, there's Google Workspace that I would recommend down this side here. Um, but you need it. That's something further down the line whenever you uh, get your domain up and running. Yeah. Um, but it all it all synchronizes and links in quite well. And then there's also connected accounts. So that's getting into more of the settings of the site. Right. Okay. Any and other also, questions? Any other questions, guys, on the actual assembly of the content into the site and the construction of the site? Because we've got about 10 minutes left before we kind of... Uh, I would also say there's a lot of good information out there on the likes of YouTube or, you know, different channels that yeah. everybody's came up with 
you know, they've had the same problems or issues before with this. And you can easily find the solution by Googling. Praise has a has a question. Chris, would you learn code now if you had never learned it years ago <laughs> with the platforms that are available these days? Definitely not. <laughs> uh, no, I, what I find good now is for me, um, I know what go how it works in the back end. So I can go into the CSS and tweak things by by overwriting styles, but you know, I don't do that that often. For the need, you know, to, to know this here, um, to know CSS and HTML. So I think it's almost for these sites, it's kind of dying out. Um, but obviously, whenever you get into bigger industry sites, you will need to have bespoke, um, you know, hand built uh, websites. Yeah. But because we're not doing that, we don't have to worry about them. Okay. Well, just, just before, uh, just a couple of, questions and uh, as Paul says shameless plug and that's just kind of relevant to what you've just said but Paul Harrington who's on the call here is a freelance developer who'd be happy to offer his services to anyone looking to build a personal site especially if you're looking for bespoke functionality that's outside the confines of what's Squarespace at all can offer, like Chris mentioned about his own site. He developed his own site from scratch. Feel free to take a look and give him a shout if you'd like him to put something together similar for you. So his his uh, URL is there in the chat box. Um, Lisa has a question. She got her domain name with Black Knight. Is it easy to link to that with Squarespace? It is. You'll need to go into Black Knight. You'll get to... Uh, name you'll get two two IP or name servers. I I'm not really technical with this side of it, you know, the whole hosting side. But what you do is you take those numbers and you put them in the Black Knight. But I'm sure there's other people within and they list could keep you right with that. Um again I would Google it more uh, and find and find out. But it's basically just changing over name servers. Brilliant. Thanks Chris. Um, Chris, a question. Do you know if Squarespace allows for different headers across different pages? Uh, Claudine is asking. She knows that you can't in Wix, but it's coming. I'm wondering if Squarespace allows for that. I think you would need to delete this global header. I and mean, in every single page would have to be its unique um, designed up. So it's kind of like a copy and paste. But that's a good question. I, I have seen images different in each page you know background images so it is possible to do that but that's a good question yeah same as wix so is, is what she's saying yeah thanks chris uh that looks like it might be the end of the questions relating to the construction so amanda you've got a fantastic website at the end of this <laughs> Okay. Um is that all okay then? Or I think yeah. yeah, I think it's I think it's great. There's also um just very quickly, um you've got these mobile information bars. So it can like pop up, you know, like a notification on mobiles. So you've also got um social links and cookie data. So it is quite powerful. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff here where you're getting in the code injection and developer APIs. So yeah, I, I think there is, there is room to develop this here, but for what we need at the moment, I don't think. I also think as your business grows, the, your website, you know, the functionality, you might have to start plugging in different Booking the engines and you know making yeah. making the website work for you more than it just being an information information site. And like Chris, what what do you think are the um the big kind of mistakes that people make when they're when they're building their own website when they're setting out? Funny you should ask that. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Um, yeah, the three mistakes that I've noticed um, is overthinking it. 
you know, you can really go around circles and confuse yourself and put yourself off um, and not get around the right. And also, also thinking that you can wait too long. You know, it's there's never the right moment for it than just to get stuck in now and uh, see what you can come up with. Um, also, I always fall foul of this where I ask too many people. I ask my wife, I ask my dad, and they've all got their own opinions and, you know, style mightn't be what they would like. But um, as long as you're designing for your audience and for your clients, you shouldn't be too far wrong. And Chris, just on that point, do you think it's worthwhile, uh, like, asking your clients um, about yeah. their view? Yeah. Okay. Explain that. Yeah, well, if you're going into like a proper build, there'll be a lot of research done, you know, um, user research, the audience, you know, target market, understanding their pain points and making sure that you're communicating, you know, what they need to hear, or, you know, sort of reassuring any fears or issues yeah. they have. Yeah. Um, I think that's um, kind of, it's the thing about building something, building a brand that has relevance. So a personal brand that has relevance. One of the things that we always say at the Indie List is, what is the problem for which you are the solution? If you can understand what your client's pain yeah. points are, and then you create your value proposition to present mm -hmm. it yourself as the solution to that problem, you're on the right track towards something that is distinctive and, and, and ownable, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a uh, selling the solution. You know, what's what's the problem rather mm -hmm. than like I never really say that we sell websites or branding. Mm -hmm. It's always, you know, we're trying to make businesses stand out or, you know, differentiate themselves from their competitors or, you know, make money or save money. It mm -hmm. always comes back to those sort of things rather than do you need a website? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the last point there, waiting for the right time. What, what do you mean by that? It's just, um, you can always wait and say, you know, oh, next week I'll have a better portfolio piece ready or, you know, um, I'll, I'll learn something this time next month instead of just jumping in and getting started. So I think it's basically get out of your own way. Yeah, well, hopefully what I've tried to do is take all the excuses <laughs> away from you. So uh, there, there is no, you know, doesn't cost it doesn't cost 10 grand nowadays to get a website done it doesn't take three months six months to you know do your own website yeah um so yeah there's really no reason why not yeah i think uh well like caroline's fed back now to say that uh, chris you've taken the fear factor out <laughs> time for her to get busy and i think one of the things that we would ask you guys is if you do decide off the back of this to develop your own website using Squarespace or indeed any of the other platforms, please share with us. Let us know how you're getting on, any experiences. Um, that would be really helpful. Yeah, I've also got a page up on my site, um, harbobrands.com forward slash indie list. Um, and it'll help you. I've kind of listed out a lot of resources that I use. Um, so it's like where you can get free photography from free illustrations, you know, inspiration, I've got the Hansen Dribbler. Also, if you want to learn more about Squarespace, you know, they do fantastic seminars um, where they take you from start to finish. Um, you can follow along. And also if you want to sign up to my newsletter, which I'll be sending like tips. And also if you want to get in touch and show me what you're, what you're creating, I'd be interested to see. Thanks so much, Chris.